Hi everyone. So, uh, my name is Abhinand C. I'm a product engineer at uh, UST Global, uh, working uh, in a team of uh, Strollbay. We at Strollbay are developing a travel platform uh, that empowers uh, users. And uh, we have been doing uh, it for the past few years using GraphQL federated microservices. Let me start by uh, sharing you our journey about how we started. Initially, uh, we had uh, Rust APIs developed, uh, and later on, we had many uh, issues uh, across our teams, uh, like uh, having multiple teams working on the same gra uh, Rust API, having multiple different devices and clients. Uh, uh, maintaining uh, Rust APIs were hard, so we uh, switched to GraphQL. It took us a bit of time, but it was uh, not much difficult, but uh, did take us time. And then uh, we were f faced with another, another uh, challenge of growing team. And we had to move to microservice design and federation. So let me start by uh, describing the problems we had faced by while developing the Rust application, Rust and the problems. Different APIs had and different requirements were there for different clients. Each client, each team had uh, different sets of requirements for serving same data. And we had to uh, maintain, manage a multiple version of the same thing. Uh, like if we need to change something, we have to uh, version increment uh, an endpoint, have to write a new v2 endpoint, and move all the other uh, data, even for a small minute changes. And there were too much unwanted data being sent. If the front-end uh, developer, like a mobile app, only, only requires just the email address, while the web app requires for the same data, uh, email address, uh, uh, email ID, address, and everything. So using the same API, uh, even the mobile clients will, give, uh, will get everything, even the unwanted data. And in a single page, they had to call multiple different uh, API requests and handle a lot of uh, calls to the backend. So assume, uh, in our case, uh, consider, let's imagine a landing page or a, a landing page of a mobile app. And uh, it requires to show the list of hotels so that we need to get the list of hotels uh, using hotels and uh, all the images, other details using other endpoints. So we have to make hundreds and hundreds of calls uh, in the same time. But if we switch to something like GraphQL, uh, the power comes here. Using a single query, the client can choose what they want. What all things they want, even pagination, only first 10 images are there. All those things, the client can request what information is required. And the GraphQL engine processes it and retrieves it from the database. You don't need to replace your whole existing REST API. GraphQL can work together with REST API and provide you uh, with uh, interface. It, you can use any sort of databases. Con comparing GraphQL to Rust is a simple example you might have already seen in the uh, internet. Cheeseburger example. Assume you are go going to a restaurant and you are provided uh, with an option to choose a che cheeseburger. If you are using a Rust API, you will get everything, including cheese, uh, tomatoes, uh, onions, everything. But sometimes not all uh, all of them um, want cheese. Some uh, don't prefer it. So if you are using GraphQL, you only get what you want, not nothing else. So what exactly is GraphQL? In simple words, it's a query language for the API. GraphQL is a server-side runtime and, uh, for executing queries using a type system that we define for our data. We just define the type system, and we uh, GraphQL doesn't require use to use any uh, fixed sort of database like Postgres. No, it works with any sort of database. Doesn't require you to use graph database, but you can sh give your uh, queries or give your data as a, a sort of graph. A simple uh, example is like uh, how GraphQL works is. Initially, the client fetches the schema to, uh, 
to get to know what all features are being provided and uh, it sends the queries and mutations queries here refer to simply akin to uh, get request in uh, rest uh, it's simply a retrieving it doesn't do any s state changes you can cache it you can uh, do anything uh, it doesn't change the database while mutation is mutating J just like genes or viruses mutate uh, we can mutate or change our database akin to something like post or put a request and uh, we retrieve the database the landscape of graphql is wide many companies used uh, use it it was initially introduced by facebook in i think 2012 or 15 and later open open sourced and it let it was later than uh, transformed into a linux foundation project in 2018 and many companies including shopify netflix uh, all those companies use GraphQL for uh, their users and you can see um, uh, a wide list of uh, GraphQL adopters uh, that they use. And let's look at the GraphQL Python ecosystem. There are many tools out there to uh, build GraphQL libraries. There are many server-side libraries. And, but uh, mostly uh, the most popular ones are Graphene, Strawberry, Adrian, and Traf. So there are two types, code first and schema first. Graphene and strawberry are code first. Code first means you write your code, you describe everything in Python language, and the schema is generated. While in schema first, you define the schema, you use the schema to write the code. So let's go through how to build our first subgraph. So some of the tools that we can use, that we use usually are uh, Graphene Python for building GraphQL APIs in the server side. And you can use any web, uh, web servers like FastAPI, Falcon, uh, Flask, anything. Just a, a simple re a web server to handle the request. All the execution, everything is done by Graphene. You just need to expose a single endpoint slash GraphQL or just a single endpoint that will be uh, all the data will be provided to the Graphene library and in many of your case as a Python developer you might be uh, using fast API and you might already been using Pydantic if you are using Pydantic you already have your data defined in Pydantic schema so uh, if you already have an existing Pydantic schema it's very easy to get into a GraphQL. You don't need to rewrite the whole types, everything uh, again in GraphQL. Just use Graphene Pydantic and all your data types return in Pydantic will be automatically converted. And in case of database, uh, I usually pref uh, use a MongoDB and Postgres. In case of MongoDB, uh, there's an ORM. You, we all usually use ORMs uh, or ODMs. And here the ODM is Mongo engine. And we define the document type structure, everything in uh, Mongo engines, ORMs or ODMs as a class. And we can use that uh, to without rewriting any code, just writing two lines of code. We can convert everything in our existing ODM uh, classes into our GraphQL schema by using Graphene Mongo. So let's start by a simple example so first we'll import graphene and then we define a type here type means what data we are providing to the user uh, it's you can uh, consider similarity to type uh, like uh, uh, interface or rest api response type or anything it's basically what we provide to the user so here we define hotel which has name a rate and star rating and name is required. So correspondingly in GraphQL schema, it will be uh, generated as type hotel, name string, exclamation mark. Exclamation means required. And rate uh, int star rating. Board doesn't have exclamation though, uh, so they are nullable. They can return null. And we define our query. This is a vague simple example. Uh, so just a simple query and we do not, are not doing any operation. We can actually uh, resolve hotel query and perform operations, write our controllers, write our business logic, and return the data. 
I'm uh, for the sake of simplicity, I'm just returning a dictionary. So uh, it will be automatically converted into the gra uh, graphene uh, type, and we will be introducing with a new thing called type query, which has hotel query. So calling hotel query will return all the information here. So we have returned our schema, and finally we need to build it or generate it. Schema equal to graphene dot schema query equal to query. And if you have written mutations or changing post operations, you can write comma mutations. And we built our schema. Uh, that schema we can expose using, uh, in case of fast API, we can use star graphene integration that uh, basically converts the schema into a po uh, post request handler. It's basically a very simple thing uh, that uh, gets the whole payload and converts into, uh, finds the operation variables and uh, the query and uh, maps and, and executes using graphene. So this is our simple uh, GraphQL first subgraph that we can develop. Here uh, you can see the corresponding schema. So using that schema, if you call the whole thing, hotel query, hotel name, star uh, rating, everything, will return everything. So the uh, web uh, would require everything. In case of mobile listing, if we only re uh, require the name, we only call the name. So we only get the name. For this simple uh, schema, we can use tools like GraphQL Vo Voyager to visualize what's happening, uh, what the schema is. It's a simple schema, so there's only a one single thing. If you take uh, something like a, a public GraphQL and point of SpaceX or some demographical, you can see multitudes of graphs connecting together. And uh, using Apollo Studio or any uh, sort of explorers, uh, this image shows here is Apollo Sandbox Explorer. Uh, you can type your queries or just click on the button to get the queries. So even without your server running, it just only requires the schema and Everything you can, uh, if you only type R, it will autocomplete to whatever uh, is required, uh, rate, ratings, all those things. So autocompletion is uh, the, we can, we already have the schema to the client, so they don't need any backend server running to te uh, try to test it. You can use GraphQL uh, mocking libraries to actually text the data. Uh, Studio al already provides it. So we have uh, returned and tested our su first subgraph. So in case of uh, building a huge team, uh, our team scale, we would have multiple different teams working on a same whole project, but different parts, different services. One team would be working for hotels, flights. Another team would be working payment handling. Another team would be working. And uh, uh, becoming a big uh, company, we would have multiple different teams working together. So we would uh, not, uh, it would be difficult to uh, it might be for some, for in our case, it, it was difficult for us to uh, continue with the monolith, so we had to break the gra uh, graph down and use microservices. So, so switching to microservices, but our existing client already uh, was using a single GraphQL server. So every different teams had to uh, stick on with using the same uh, monolithic GraphQL similar schema, but they need their own repos and their own databases. Each team would have their own databases. So we were faced with challenges that while building a GraphQL app, each service would have their own GraphQL endpoint. And uh, sometimes we might uh, require a combination of data from multiple services. Like for a hotel listing page, the price would be uh, resolved by something like orders. Uh, the uh, de details or favorite information would be returned by a user service. And some uh, something else would uh, would be, uh, and the details of hotel would be returned by hotel uh, data service. So each different service would be returning, and the, in the front end, uh, it would it should be a, only a single query, a single type to be showcased. And it, uh, they may also a service like uh, to compute price. We would need to uh, define something, uh, de get data from hotels. So a service might depend on another service to get the data. Everything can be solved by using a simple tool 
called graphene federation. Initially, there were GraphQL stitching, and then uh, GraphQL federation was introduced. Using GraphQL federation, we can combine multiple services into a single schema. So GraphQL, uh, each uh, individual schema or each microservice schema or service schema is called subgraph. And the combined schema is called the supergraph. And it is called a single federated graph. So each backend services would be providing their own subgraphs and they define relations to each other. The federated schema abstract everything from the users. So client, clients and mobile devices or our front end developers would actually see it as the same old simple single schema, but in the back end it would be actually handled by different different teams. So each team would be showcasing their own subgraph and finally the router or the gateway would combine everything and provide a single interface or a single graph so that the front end would only need to sh uh, view the documentation or the details of a single endpoint. In Python, we can easily uh, use Graphene Federation. Uh, we can pip install Graphene Federation. And this is a small uh, code base to showcase the minimalistic working of GraphQL Federation. Here, I have used something like key key equal to name so that name defines what data is required to get the uh, type so in this another service this second code snippet is from another service the first is from another service so service a and service b so the service a hotel service would be providing name rate star rating all those information as we written earlier we just add the key name here and uh, instead of using graphene dot schema, we uh, used build schema directive from graphene federation and enable federation support, uh, federation v2 support. So it actually tries to build a federated subgraph. And in the other service also, we similarly define the key name. Name is required. Uh, in the hotel service, a name is already there from the data. In this uh, second service, it uh, returns us additionally slug and it uses the key name value and uh, name is external. You can see here it is external. External means it the service, service 2 does not own uh, name data. It only owns slug. So name would be provided by the key uh, that is federation. So any data fetching the slug would first take the data name from uh, hotel service and pass it to, to the second string. Everything happens behind the screen by the GraphQL router or the gateway. So as a develop backend developer, we mostly might not uh, need to worry about everything. We just need to write a resolve reference uh, function, a simple function to do what should be returned while uh, if name key is passed, how should the data be returned? So this is a simple example for GraphQL Federation. And the next ta challenge that comes would be optimizing our GraphQL. Our co code might be faster, but we would need to uh, wait for multiple operations, DB operations, and everything. So some data, like pricing info, or some uh, data that requires complex compu uh, com uh, computation would take a lot of time. So to solve that, we can use defer directive, at defer. And uh, the magical case is backend does not need to worry anything about defer directive. We do not need to write a any line of additional code to get defer working. The front end can simply call dot dot add defer and defer what data uh, should be returned later. So initially, uh, it will be directly hitting the uh, name information from the data and be passed. Uh, getting the name from DB uh, would not require much time it would be instant in milliseconds, one or two milliseconds. But computing the ra uh, rate after finding the offer price, uh, live price from uh, other providers, all those uh, things would take a bit of delay. So solving that delay, uh, if we do not use diff differ, the front end would get ev all the data later. But if we use differ, front end would first get the name initially in uh, one or two milliseconds, and then 
the read data after 5 or 10 seconds so that uh, they would get the final data in short span so they can get the first paint or first visual uh, representation quickly and not wait for small information that hold back and uh, the next thing is optimizing IO operation. We can uh, we did move to from synchronous uh, Python to asynchronous Python uh, because we had a lot of uh, blocking of operations and uh, async was the best suitable thing for us. And uh, during our migration, the best uh, simple uh, method to wrap the external li libraries that were not. Uh, that did not have any asynchronous support, we used asgraph.sync wrapper. It actually helps us to convert the asynch asynchronous code into asynchronous code so that we can uh, define a a async function from the synchronous function. And the next thing and the last major optimization we can do is caching GraphQL apps. Caching is not as simple as HTTP request. Uh, uh, Rust APIs because different uh, we have different uh, APIs to catch, but here only a single endpoint. So caching is a bit of a uh, challenge. So we can use uh, global IDs provided by uh, GraphQL to identify which is the data and build our own custom uh, resolver or use uh, something like Stellate. I'll be talking about Stellate uh, to showcase you another uh, example graphene uh, directive. So using a a uh, service like Stellate, they would be providing uh, you with uh, CDNs and cache, uh, caching servers. So to uh, show them which data should be cached, we need to, uh, we can either define everything in their own uh, TypeScript code or YAML code and push it to them, or we can actually do it in our code, own code. We can simply do it in our code by defining a Stellate cache directive. That this is a custom directive which we can define in our own code so that we can uh, uh, push uh, in inform Stellate that we have a cache in information stored in our schema. And also, uh, we can you, you can use build any other custom directive uh, for your own custom use cases to inform your clients about any extra features. In this case, we are informing Stellate about the cache information. And after defining the uh, directive, uh, GraphQL directive, it's a simple uh, class to uh, which takes uh, the information name, where should be applied. It should be applied to field and as well as a type. Object means type, GraphQL type and a single field. We can even cache uh, an item field level. So we can simply uh, put the add a directive and cache directive decorator to a class to cache the whole type. Or we can simply uh, res resort to using directive as a function uh, in the field to only cache this field. In the first case, we would be caching the whole type. So any information uh, from the type would be cached. Uh, and all the queries, uh, all the name, rate, and star rating, everything would be cached. In the second case, only rate would be cached calling for a uh, name or including star rating would uh, cause a hit in our backend to get the latest updated data. And this is just a gist of what's there in the GraphQL ecosystem. There are many more challenges we can uh, see and face, uh, overcoming like n plus one problem using batchings and uh, data loaders. And uh, we can uh, define our custom directive. We can learn. Uh, there are uh, much more things to be covered in GraphQL Federation, like entities, keys, external directives, uh, shareable fields. All those directives are uh, as part of GraphQL, uh, as part of GraphQL Federation. And we can also define our custom directives to uh, inform our client of any of our custom specific features using uh, Graphene directives. And handling. Uh, uh, file uploads in GraphQL is not so uh, easy because GraphQL uh, does not actually recommend uh, using GraphQL endpoints for file uploads. Transferring a lot of data would be uh, difficult. We have to uh, resort to using uh, Rust APIs. We uh, could work on more about how we can 
uh, use GraphQL for uh, file uploads, and ha how uh, we can uh, explore more about east-west inter-service communication using GraphQL. Uh, thank you all. So, thank you so much, Abhinand. I think the GraphQL is another like really good tool for like organize your API, right? And sorry, uh, I, I, I mean okay. Sorry, I I mean I think GraphQL is another good tool for like organize your API when you have so many multiple layers something like that, and even you have like nested query something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, it actually helps us if you have a different variety of uh, different multiple different uh, services exposing same data. Uh, you, you can use GraphQL, and GraphQL Federation actually helps us to provide much more. If two teams are working on same uh, page or same data, we can define it as a type, and each team will be contributing their parts to that type. So in uh, in final results, it would be a single type. The client would see it as a single interface, but in the back end, different teams can work on different parts and add it. And one of the major things about GraphQL is that you can uh, resort to not uh, use versioning. Graf uh, GraphQL uh, Foundation actually recommends against, I've read in their blogs that they recommend against version numbering. You, you only define a single GraphQL endpoint and you evolve your schema as per changes. And uh, you can actually use uh, deprecated directive, add deprecated to show that the field is deprecated and it would be not be used uh, later. And when everything is not, all the clients uh, have moved on, you can simply remove it from the schema. You can uh, get great observability from uh, the your own gateway or uh, using your studio or router. Yes, that's awesome. Yeah, it's, but, but just it needs uh, required a bit like learning curve right on to learn understanding more about GraphQL. Uh, a learning curve, you can uh, sim try to uh, get analogies from Rust uh, like uh, queries are uh, similar to get requests that you do not change anything. You can use cached uh, data for uh, queries. Mutations are like post request. You cannot never use cache because you always change something in the back end. So similarly, uh, trying on building some analogies with your existing knowledge can easily uh, tackle that learning curve. And once you get the gist of what GraphQL is, it's very easy to Yeah, do. I think so. Okay, thank you so much. Oh, anyone have one uh, question? I give you just only one question. Do you have any question to ask him about GraphQL? Okay, not yet. Okay, we still have plenty of time today to talking about this one. Thank you all so much for sharing very good uh, knowledge today. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you.